to Bent Not Broken, where we empower and motivate women by sharing real life stories of adversity and provide expert advice on how to overcome those obstacles and help you live your best life. Now here's your host, Juanita Kelly. Hello friends. Welcome to episode 17 of Bent Not Broken. I'm your host, Juanita Kelly. Back in 2008, I gave lectures to a group of women on learning to love yourself. It was such a wonderful experience to share my story of loving myself and how I dealt with all the trauma that I went through and the steps that I took to turn my negative feelings about myself into feelings that were positive. It was difficult. It was painful to look at myself and to see all the times that I didn't love myself. But this journey of learning to love myself showed me that I was worthy and that I deserve to be happy, that I'm beautiful on the outside as well as the inside, and that I deserve to be loved the way that I envision myself being loved, and that I deserve to be loved the way that I loved others. And if someone was not loving me the way that I deserved, it was okay for me to walk away from them because it's ultimately about bringing people into your life to uplift you and to love you the way you love yourself. My question to you today is, do those around you love you the way you deserve to be loved? On today's episode, we'll be talking about finding your self-confidence to say enough is enough with speaker and storyteller Amika Detta. Today's episode is entitled, Learning to Love Yourself. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Bent Not Broken. Today, I have the pleasure of having Omnika Detta join us uh, in conversation. Omnika is a storyteller, speaker, and spoken word artist. She also hosts her own podcast, Spoken Word by Omnika, where she focuses on healing through poetry. After growing up with an emotionally unavailable father and missing out on making connections after being homeschooled, she struggled with relationships and she found herself in an abusive relationship. One of these relationships shattered her. She found healing and empowerment through spoken word. And today she speaks on numerous platforms and has hosted a TED Talk on falling in love with herself. Welcome, Amnika, to Bit Not Broken. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It has been such a, like, I just wanted to say this to you, first of all. I have, and I know I said this to you briefly before, I have listened to your TED Talk five times, easy, like one right after another. I really enjoyed it. It was so motivating. I want the listeners at home to kind of get an understanding of who you are and what you've gone through in this journey that, that, that you've taken. So we can go back to your childhood. Can we talk a little bit about it? Yes, yes, Absolutely. So I understand that you were homeschooled and your father, who was a mathematician, was emotionally unavailable to you. Mm -hmm. And you had a lot of like a living up to his idea of who you should be and how you should be able to perform academically. How was that as as, as a child? Um, It was very difficult to deal with because I didn't know what was happening. I wanted to be this perfect daughter for my father. And I was homeschooled for the initial 12 years of my life where I didn't get out of the house. I actually just stayed inside my room and I'd be surrounded by books. And my father would, my parents are separated. So he would come every weekend, every other weekend. He would just give me homework, tell me how to solve the problems. And I would just do them all week. He was gonna, I knew that he was gonna come again and check and tell me things where I went wrong, what I could do. And he would say things like, okay, you're too stupid. You don't even know how to do this. I don't understand how, how can you be my daughter? How are you my daughter? You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of stay, it it stays imprinted on your mind if someone says something like that to you. So for me, I felt like I was never good enough for my father. And I thought I needed to practice more more and become a different person to just kind of impress him just want him to, I just mm-hmm. wanted him to be proud of me you know what part did your mother play in this was she uh, motivating you or did she do the same that your father was doing she was very protective of me but the mm-hmm. thing with my mom is she is a social worker and she was not very really available um, at home I was mm-hmm. practically raised by my grandparents 
So my parents were already, they were separated. My mom was never really home. She'd just be like out helping other people. And yeah, I used to call my grandmother mom until I was like 13 years old. And I kind Mm -hmm. of mended that relationship with my mom when I was 18 because I went through a very difficult time and she was there for me. And that's when I realized, okay, she's a person I need in my life. But before that, I really didn't have a very good relationship with my mother either. She was not available. And I grew up very, it was kind of, um, it was lonely, (laughs) but my grandsons Mm -hmm. always, they were always there. But uh, for my parents, for the most part, they weren't very available now. Yeah, that's horrible. So as a young child, you were already feeling disconnected from your family, at least your father and even your mother. You had a connection with your grandmother, which is which is wonderful. How did that bring you? Let, let's fast forward a little bit. You went through your 12 years of education and you were homeschooled and you didn't have a lot of uh, childhood friends or did you have a lot of childhood friends? None. Not at all. No, my friends so were completely isolated. Absolutely. I mm-hmm. used to watch a lot of like these animation shows and like cartoons and all that. That was it for mm-hmm. me. My world was just inside one room and it was there was a t- I had television in my room and I would just watch um, a lot of anime, a lot of cartoons and I would read books and I would read a lot of uh, poetry and short stories and novels. So I started reading novels at a very young age and I enjoyed that. I started writing at a very young age, but I didn't have any friends. I never went out to play. I just didn't have a very regular childhood. For me, going outside was just not a normal thing. It was kind of, yeah, it was forbidden for a while because my my father used to think like, okay, if you go out and you play with others, they're going to make you, it's going to make you stupid. You should stay home and study. You should try to become better. You should go and do big things in life. If you go out, you're wasting your time mm-hmm. with, with other kids. Don't do that. So I never yeah. really had friends. So that, that's also very hard. So as you started to grow and you became a young adult, how were your relationships and, and how did you, you know, communicate, socialize with other young adults in your age group? Um, it was not normal. When I started going mm-hmm. to school, I was bullied even because obviously I was very different. I was an introvert. I didn't talk to anyone. I was the weird kid in school. I was the weird kid in college. So I was bullied even in college. So university for me was really good. So I did my master's at the age of, I started at the age of 24. So that's when my good time kind of started. That's when I found Mm -hmm. my people, my friends. So all my good friends are from my university days. But in college and in school, I was just, I was not very happy. It was a terrible time, to be honest. Yeah, no, I understand. That's yeah. uh, that's completely understandable. So you, you started to get into your groove and you found yourself 24. You're, you're working on your master's and you have a good group of friends and you're realizing, starting to realize who you are. Absolutely, and you, yes. And, then, and now you start, you start dating. I actually dated before and it was in a very good relationship um, because I obviously didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't know what love was for me. I was always deprived of that, you know, that emotional connection, that affection. So for me, I was always constantly looking for a figure that I could impress someone who would be proud to have me, someone who would be like, okay, I'm proud of you. Someone who would say Mm -hmm. things like that. So I obviously chased people who were not meant for me. They didn't deserve me. So my -hmm. relationship before that didn't work out. Even after the the whole, you know, I found myself. No, no, didn't quite work out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So you you find yourself in in, uh, one abusive relationship and in another abusive relationship. What happened that you that you realized, you know, I deserve better. Mm -hmm. So my last relationship, which shattered me, was with a narcissist. And at first, I hadn't realized that because narcissists, they make it very, you know, hard for us to Mm -hmm. understand that, okay, you know what, I'm a narcissist. So first, it started with the love bombing. And he was always there for me. He was always so sweet. It was going too good. You know, in my heart, I was like, oh, my God, this man is the perfect man. I've been looking for him all my life. And he was um, way older. When I was 25, he um, he was 39 when I met him. Soon he turned 40. So for me, he was the perfect, you know, in a weird Freudian way, my father figured that I wanted to impress. 
And he was mm-hmm. impressed. And I was his dream girl. He would say things like, you know, I've waited all my life for you. I'm so proud of you. You're so amazing. And I believed him only to find out that he was never loyal to me. Um, so this was a long distance oh, no. relationship. Um, mm-hmm. Like he travels a lot for his work and even back in the day. So when he was here, we were together for two months. And I mean, he promised a future where we would like do the thing, like we would travel for a year and then we would eventually settle down somewhere. But I went, literally, I traveled the world for him. I went to many places just to be with him, only to find out that I wasn't the only one in his life. And yeah, that was pretty heartbreaking. But I think the worst part of it all um, is that I couldn't let go. Even though I knew he was cheating on me, I knew that he was not loyal. I still loved him so much that I accepted that. And I didn't let him go. I still stayed with him, knowing who he was. So yeah. So is it is it a fact that maybe at that time you didn't you didn't love yourself, and you accepted this this bad situation as being okay? I absolutely believed, genuinely believed that I didn't deserve better. That's what I deserved. Oh. I believed mm-hmm. that this is. This is just because of me. I'm unworthy of love. I'm unworthy of being, I'm not perfect and I can never be. And there were a lot of other issues with this man. He would often, so he is attracted to a certain kind of type of girl, I would say, physically Mm -hmm. speaking, uh, which I don't have. He's attracted to this, um, you know, women with full figure you know, like big women. I don't know how to say this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I'm like not a full, like a full figured woman, someone who yeah, has maybe like larger Instagram, breasts and yeah, fuller hips. Like yes, I, I yeah, mm-hmm. that was his mm-hmm. type. And um, obviously, I don't look like that. I'm very petite, and I'm, I've always been tiny and small. And um, oh, you're beautiful! You're <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> thank you. But he uh, once he said if I give you $10,000, what are you going to change about yourself, babe? And I'm like, Mm. that's when it completely shattered me. And I seriously considered um, getting plastic surgery done. And I talked to my mom and this is something I even, I spoke about in my TED talk as well. My mom said, if you change yourself, he's probably just going to like you a little more, but will you be able to love yourself? And that's when I kind of realized that, you know what, this is not for me. Because he's never going to be happy with me. I can change my breasts today. I'll change my hips tomorrow. Next day, my nose, my eyes, my everything will be changed. And I won't even be me. So how am I going to impress this man? How am I going to keep this man interested? He's clearly not in love with who I am. He wants to change everything about me. So that was kind of the breaking point of the relationship. I knew I had to let him go. It was very hard. It was very difficult, but it had to be done. When you think back to this time when you were, you know, in love with this, this man and he's telling you, Hey, to be who I want you to be or who I envision you to be, you have to look this way. And you're thinking back to those times. How, how does, how does that make you feel when you're, when you know, now you're in the present and you're going back and you're going, you're looking at that, that young lady who was like thinking, maybe I should change who I am. What 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 are you thinking about when you when you see that? that I girl? see I see a woman who didn't have any self confidence, yeah. any self respect, as a matter of fact, because I knew that man used to cheat on me, and I stayed with him still because I just I loved him too much, and I was dependent on him in a in a way, um, I, and I just yeah I, I was a very sad and not very confident human being. Now I, I look back and I'm like, okay, I'm in a better place. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. I've accepted myself the way I am. But back then I just didn't have that self-respect or confidence that I had a lot of body image issues. I, I remember when I was going through this, my, you know, I love dressing up. I love re- getting ready. I love doing my hair. I love doing my makeup. I love going out. When I was going through this time, I didn't even get out of my apartment for two months. 
I just stayed in and I used to cry and I used to be sad. I didn't do my hair. I didn't get ready. I was just turning into someone this depressive. I was depressed, but mm -hmm. it, to a point, I just couldn't live with myself anymore. You know, that point had arrived where I had to get up and just like, you know what, this can't go on. My friends were like, we don't even recognize you. Who are you? Who have you become? You have to do something about it. So, yeah. So now I look back and I'm like, yeah, I had no self-confidence whatsoever. Now I'm doing a lot better. So what would you tell a young lady who's uh, listening to this? Maybe she is in an abusive or controlling relationship and she's at the point where she's she's going to have the plastic surgery or she's going to start to change her personality to fit someone else's idea of perfection. What would you tell her? Um, just, it's not worth it. Trying to impress someone. And how long can you do this for? Like, how long is this person going to be interested in you? Do you have, is there any guarantee? Maybe if you change this two years later, he wants you to change something else and he wants you to just change you completely. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm just going to say you have to fall in love with yourself first. You have to learn to love yourself the way you are. And then comes someone who appreciates you for whoever you are. If this is something that you want to do with your body, if you want to get plastic surgery because you feel that you need it, you go for it, girl. But if there is someone else making you feel that you are not enough the way you are, this person is definitely not the one for you. This person does not deserve you. And you need to find someone better or just be with yourself. Don't find anyone whatsoever. Learn to love yourself the way you are. Do not do anything. Do not change yourself for someone because there's going to be a time. Maybe this person will be in love with you. This person will like you for all the changes that you have made. But you will not be able to recognize your own self and you will be lost in this world. Perfection is something that we are going to, we're going to always want to achieve. It's, we're never going to be perfect. We're always going to find flaws. Okay, this is not okay. This I need to change my nose now. I need to change my body. You know, Every time we look at ourselves in the mirror, we find something wrong. Do we not do that? This is not right. This yeah. is not. But if you mm -hmm. find yourself the way you are, you feel complete in yourself, within yourself. And that's when you know that, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, this is not okay, but that's me. That's who I am. And I'm, I'm happy with the way I look. I'm happy with the way I am. How do you start to learn to love yourself? If you've been so long you know, picking at yourself and going, I'm not good enough and I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not this person. How do you turn that around and say, you know what? I am good enough and begin to love yourself. The first thing is to not depend on others validation of who you are, what other people think of you or say about you or once they they are it's just little projection of who they want to be or who they want to see if it can be their own insecurities it can be anything other than that it can be any reason but it's not who you are so do not depend on someone else's validation of who you are and it starts with it's very small it starts small you start spending more time with yourself you start doing things for yourself Everything that you do, do you find happiness in it? it okay, I'm going to try to do my hair, but am I doing this because it makes me happy? Or am I doing this because this? if I don't do this, society is not going to accept me. So start doing things that make you happy, whatever makes you happy. Small steps. It can be going out for a walk. It can be going out to the movies alone. Maybe not the best. I don't know if theaters have opened or maybe not now, maybe not during these times. But when you start to spend time with yourself, you discover what an amazing personality you have. And I, I am mm -hmm. the biggest advocate of speaking to yourself, talking to yourself in the shower, wherever you, whenever you're alone, whatever you're doing, speak with yourself. Get I'm not the only yourself. one who speaks to themselves in the shower, I see. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> no, I, I literally, I have discussions with myself. Like yes. I, I, I need to... So you get to know yourself better. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. When you discover yourself, you know who you are, you're going to stop thinking about other people and what they think about you. And because exactly. that's just projection, that's just their own projection mm-hmm. on you. So you just have to learn to discover yourself. So you, you've done TED Talk, which I, like I said earlier, I totally loved it. I enjoyed, I, I listened to it five times back to back to back. It was just so moving to me. And I, I love the fact that you have such a romance with language and with words. And when I read your poetry, I get, I literally I sound like a, a, a gushing a schoolgirl, but I get goosebumps because it's so moving. And so it, it feeds, it feeds your soul with, with thoughts and it makes you get outside of yourself and look at yourself and analyze who you are and what you want out of life. And I want to thank you for everything that you just put out into the universe because it's so wonderful and it's nourishing. Thank you so much. Uh, You've shared some tremendous insight with us today. And I thank you for that. How can our listeners at home find more information about you? I have a website. It's my name and amikadutta.com. You can go and check it out and you can connect with me on all social media platforms. I'm an amikadutta on Instagram, on Facebook, and on LinkedIn. You can find me and connect with me there. Well, thank you for joining us today. I really, really enjoyed this talk. Thank you so much for having me once again. On the next episode of Bit Not Broken, we talk with author and therapist, Dr. Roberta Shaler about moving on. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. This has been Bent Not Broken with Juanita Kelly. Thanks for listening. You can find us online at www.bentnotbroken.co, all major podcast platforms and YouTube. Be sure to follow us on social media at Bent Not Broken Podcast.